Morning everyone. Hope everyone's having a lovely morning. My name's Kiara and I'm going to be talking to you today about the role of an allied health assistant. I know Ellen normally does this but today I'll be doing it in place of her. Um, hopefully she gets better soon. I also have some handouts of my presentation to make it a bit easier to see and I also have some Mandarin translations as well on there. So the agenda today. I have how does an allied health assistant fit in with the rest of the team and how does this role differ from an allied health professional? It's my main topic that I will be discussing today. Roles and responsibilities, knowledge required, some limitations and the benefits of having an allied health assistant part of your team. So how does an allied health assistant fit in? So as an allied health assistant, you're there to assist and not diagnose. That's up to the professional. They have those qualifications to help identify those needs of the clients more than we do. We're just there to assist, help facilitate programs. How does the role differ from a professional? We follow what is set by the professional, whereas the professional assigns the task to the health assistant. This best suits the client's needs, their, their medical history as a professional has more details and has been sitting in with each session consultation discussing with the client what suits them, what they need. Some roles and responsibilities. Document, so documentation. This may be documentation of clients, documentation of services, documentation that the, the professional needs you to write down, diary entries, things like that. Assistant therapy, our main role, assistant therapy, you get the gist. Interview, we may be there as a triage service to interview the clients, make them feel a bit more comfortable and also help the clients understand a bit more about what's going to happen in the consultation today. Supply checking and stock take. It's always great to understand what that involves, having a stock take system keeping supply and reorder systems, also great to have good knowledge across those and making sure they're up to date and nothing's running out. There may even be magazines in the waiting area, uh, things like that. Information of services as a health assistant, it's great to know where your workplace is, the services that they provide or extra services outside the practice or workplace that may be in connection. This may be someone who's great has really been grateful for their occupational therapy services and may want to see a speech pathologist. You may have cards or pamphlets providing that information further. Assist the allied health professional. Woohoo! <laughs> That's what we're there to do and we love doing it and it's great to be there to be like, I'm here when you need me, I'm ready. It's great to know I can do this. It's great to have that attitude ready to balance that workload. Cleaning, this is making sure everything's clean, whether that's a treatment room, whether that's a waiting room, or just a general work area. It's great to be across those WH and H and S policies and also some safe working practices to make sure you're mentally happy, physically ha happy, and all things like that. Communication, great to be across communication styles, body language, and even your presence and tone, modality, things like that, it's great to know. Even some support systems that may help those non-English speaking backgrounds, maybe even elderly or young children, knowing who to go to, who to talk to, great to be across. Client preparations, always got to be prepared. Um, great to understand what involve, what's involved in the client preparation process. Again, that may be interviewing, that may even be talking to them beforehand, or even just getting down their details, their address, phone number, insurance, things like that. Again, that could be reception, but it could also be assistance knowledge as well. Test results, you need to understand um, how to read those test results, how to understand them, how to relay the information, and also when it comes to that confidentiality, knowing who to tell and what to keep yourself, and maybe even to just blurt out this person, oh my gosh, they finally got this under control and they've been diagnosed with this and to the whole workplace. Not really the best idea. Knowledge you need. Know your medical terminology. This is also very helpful in test results. 
maybe reading it yourself or even passing it on to the professional it may even help guide you in the programs that you're be being asked to facilitate again with communication styles knowing if it's great that client wants that extra information that extra feedback communication styles great to know what suits you what will best suit the client not being intimidating not being too passive just a bit of in between knowing what where what's the best method practice services Again, this may be workplace services, knowing what you provide. Programs, being on top of your programs, knowing what's involved and what's expected. Client details and history, you may need to know this, you may not, but it's great to have the background information if you're allowed or if you have access. Some interview techniques, great to know what best suits, maybe practice with yourself, or maybe someone else, do you feel comfortable if I say this, is my tone right, am I speaking clearly? Great to get some, maybe some outside info as well. Again, knowing your WHS policies and procedures and safe working practices as well. It's great to be across these important details that every workplace provides. Client privacy and confidentiality, I talked a bit about that earlier. Um, processes, again, there will be processes in every form. It's great to be across and understand all of that. Equipment and their uses. You may be using hoists, you may be using some type of technology, this may be, there's also the TENS machine, it's an electronic device when it comes to physiotherapy. There's many, there's lifting devices, there's people, there's walking devices, there's a lot of different things that people may need to use. Where things are kept and used. It's great to know where things are kept and used, make sure to put them back in their place. Expectations, it's great to know what your expectations are what everyone else's expectations are, just so you can get a better understanding of what's happening and where you're going. Who are your go-to people? It's great to know who your go-to people are. This may be your supervisor, the professional, it may even just be your workplace advisor, the WHS officer, first aid officer. Great to know who your people are that you can trust and who can help you in your support network. Below, I also have support. Again, talking about the support network, but also other outsider support. You may need an interpreter to help you with your interviewing process or even just communication in general. Limitations. Some limitations are assisting, not diagnosing. I talked about this earlier. We're there to assist, not to diagnose. Following, not setting. Again, we're following what the professional has asked, not setting what, what they're talking about. Personal preferences. I talk about this in regards to don't take it, not taking situations to heart. Maybe someone prefers another doctor, maybe they prefer another assistant, it's just whatever they feel comfortable with. Maybe you need to reflect why do they not feel very comfortable, or maybe we can provide something extra that might make them feel a bit more safe or comfortable, or maybe even a different environment of change. But again, that's up to you to talk about with a professional or maybe even a supervisor. Or you can do with your best. If you try your best, you do your best, and know you're across everything, that's all you can do. Benefits of having an allied health assistant in your team. Woohoo, yay! <laughs> so, assistants are a great soundboard for ideas. Again, they will be in the treatment room with your clients, and you can say, okay, how did they go with this program today? Was it successful? Maybe what are some changes we can do? Again, being that soundboard of advice is great. You're helping facilitate those programs the professional has set, doing it in accordance with their rules. Maybe this might be a physiotherapist saying, can the client start with walking up the stairs today? Maybe we can set this goal and seeing if the client works with them, does this as well. Knowledge of processes, I talked about this, knowing. Knowing all of the processes, great. Equipment will be tidy and organized. If you have a tidy and organized assistant, which we will all be, then everything will be organized on top of everything. Even the professional can go in there and be like, I know where everything is. Um, support network, it's great. Assistants are a great support network, particularly as they will know your clients a, a little bit as well. And you can help collaborate on things. Um, in, assistants will encourage the services. Maybe you might ask, uh, the professional might ask the assistant, hey, can you encourage this extra service I may provide? Or I have a colleague I know that can help them with this. It's great to be across all that. Interviewing, handling client details and info. As an assistant, you may also be required to handle some client details and information, make sure to record them correctly, 
even assessments with programs, make sure to put them in the right folder, name, date of birth, things like that. Um, assistants are also a great um, source of making sure your clients are comfortable and independent. Particularly, this may be another allied health professional service, this may be a podiatrist, this may be a dietitian, any sort of allied health professional you're assisting, making sure those clients feel comfortable and independent with whatever service the professional is providing and your health assisting. Work-life balance, as a health assistant, it's great to balance that workload from the professional to you and you can help make it life less stressful. Resolutions, this may be resolutions in the workplace or maybe even you're struggling, the professional struggling a little bit with help, helping the client understand something, maybe the assistant might come in, provide something extra. Of course, if the professional feels comfortable and they've kind of discussed beforehand a sort of resolution, it's great. It's almost like a teamwork. Again, if that professional's up to doing that, the assistant should be always there to help that along. Now have knowledge is your power to success. Again, if you remember these things, you can take in these things, it's great. So thank you everyone. I uh, hope everyone's learned a few things. I did want to have an activity today, but I did run out of time. I wanted to go into one of the treatment rooms and kind of go through what everything that's in there. Again, maybe not everything, but a few important things that we might need to look, look at and know and identify. Maybe a bit of quizzing um, and particularly where all the cleaning equipment is, where certain things are too. But maybe I can do that at a later time. But thank you everyone for listening to me today. I'd love to hear your feedback on my presentation and feel free to ask a few questions. So I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.